It's not fun to have your two-ton SUV's brakes hacked just as you're parking in front of a ditch. Okay, hold on tight. Hold on. Oh, sh That's what I've learned from Charlie Miller and Chris Valasek, a pair of hackers who have spent the last year developing a piece of software that can wirelessly sabotage this 2014 Jeep Cherokee. Ah, uh, we are all quickly becoming slaves to our completely wired, totally connected, interacted to the point of soon being able to deliver a solid neck massage on command automobiles. Soon we'll step into our cars, tell the computer where we want to go, tune to the hard line on our massive 10-inch auto screens and relax, only to watch as we are being driven somewhere not on the agenda thanks to hackers snaring our signal. And it's happening now. Anything automotive gets an immediate call to the nationally syndicated car coach, racer mechanic, and pedal to the metal commentator, Lauren Fix. Joined by the CEO of Quantum Networks, technology analyst and best-selling author, Ari Zoldan. I want to thank you both for joining us. And Lauren, I'm going to start with you. A Jeep Cherokee okay. being over... To Wait a minute, we've seen this coming. Is this really a shock to anybody in the auto industry? No, we actually know about it. And actually, uh, FCA or Chrysler was well aware that this hack was going on. Uh, and they know which screen it was, and they actually shared the information, which we do appreciate. Uh, but the fact is, for this to actually happen is so minute of a, uh, of a possibility, and there are so many things that we can do to block this, and the industry is working on that. But uh, the part that really bothers me about this story coming out, and this is something I know that you're going to love, is that Markey and, Room, and, Ro, uh, and Blumenthal, the two senators, want to put up a law that is including the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, who has done such a wonderful job in the past, and the FTC, and they want to start putting regulations in place. But my concern is if all the hacking of them sort of absorbing all of our content, who's to say that that's what, not what their plan is, is to absorb the content from your vehicle so that uh, they can use that too. Ah, uh, there we go. Ari, let me turn to you on this. This was 8.4 Uconnect is what this is involved in this specific vehicles. And Lauren says it's very minute. Well, granted, for now, but these guys used hardware, they used software they created. Isn't it possible that this can get a lot more intrusive on all vehicles in the future? Oh, th there's no question. Look, I, I mean, especially Lauren had some really good points, but what I would say also, you know, once you're connected to the internet, there's a level of vulnerability, whether, whether it's your cell phone, whether it's your iWatch, and now we're moving into vehicles when, interestingly enough, vehicles are no longer what it was 30 years ago, just a, a, a car. Uh, it's now it's a piece of technology and we're driving technology or many times technology is driving us. So given that it's again, it's it's no longer a car. It, it's a very sophisticated piece of technology packaged in the fact that we're connected to the Internet. There, there are elements of uh, there are elements of, of security risks. Um, but I, I would imagine that certainly car manufacturers, not the first time that I think we're going to hear about this and certainly not the last, but I would imagine car manufacturers are pretty much on top of it. And look, it's a it's a complex ecosystem and there's always going to be pockets of inefficiencies. You know, will this happen uh, on a regular basis? Absolutely not. All right. Now, Lauren, this was in a Chrysler vehicle here, and I, I loved it when one of the major news networks put up this massively scary headline where they said, pack your Chrysler vehicle before hackers kill you. Let's everybody calm <laughs> down here, okay? That was right up there. But isn't it fair to say, though, that if it happens to Chrysler, this could happen to other vehicles? Mm -hmm. You say it's minute now, but every vehicle is basically right. an open technological signal, correct? Right, and they were seeing that GM and Infinity also were two brands that they could have easily tapped into. So what they've done is you need to have the IP address, just like you would at home with your Wi-Fi network. Then you need a password to get in. No one leaves their Wi-Fi open anymore, and if you do, you get exactly what you ask for. It's like leaving your front door wide open, and I know Ari will agree with that. I mean, that's the first thing they tell you. You put in a Wi-Fi hub in your home, and the next thing that you do is you put a passcode on it. And if you don't, then you get what you ask for. Now, the other thing is it's only on the 8 point four inch you connect which is the larger one the other thing that uh, people need to know is that if you do have cellular service you don't actually have to use it you don't have to pay for the service if it's in your vehicle if you do want to use it make sure you put a passcode and don't leave it as one two three four okay which we've all talked about a million times before and people don't seem to quite get yes. it so Ari I got about 45 yeah. seconds left here moving forward what does the and Lawrence even touched on this a little bit but what does the auto agencies the auto manufacturers and the the people themselves the car owners need to do to make sure this doesn't happen to their vehicle sure I, I think what Lawrence said was right on the the end user the car owner has to protect themselves the same way that 
that they that they should be changing their passwords, uh, you know, every 30 days on their computer. But I also think, and people aren't talking about this, I think it's important for the car manufacturers to have full disclosures and that there should be some sort of, whether it's a learning center or just at least informing the customers that, hey, your car is connected to the Internet. This is a, a possible vulnerability and just beware. Let's also say this. It might not be a bad idea to have some people on the road have someone else driving their cars for them. We just <laughs> want to make that point, which could be a very good thing. I uh, want to remind everybody, make sure you get the latest on automotive. Go to laurenfix.com 24-7. That's where she is. I want to thank Lauren Fix. As always, Ari Zoldan, thanks so much for joining us. I hope we get a chance to talk again soon. Coming up next, telling it like it is, there is one word Americans can never seem to properly define. And actually, if you think about it, Donald Trump is the guy who made us think about it this time. It's coming up next on The Hard Line.